Mindfulness of Emotions. Mindfulness of emotions is a really important topic in my opinion because for many people it's emotions that sidetrack them and cause them to become mired in thoughts or stuck or distracted. So let's look at mindfulness of emotion in detail. I believe this will be news you can use. It can be useful to look at three components of emotions. Thoughts, physical sensations and the emotional mood or tone of your mind. So firstly, the thoughts associated with the emotions are incredibly powerful in terms of keeping the emotions going. The thoughts are what make up the story behind the emotion. You may notice that the whole thing of creating scenarios, which people often describe as a habit they are in, is based on creating pretty complex stories around some basic objective facts. So it's useful to notice the thoughts and stories that are associated with our emotions. Noticing that we are doing these thoughts and stories gives us the power to make a choice, to stop rerunning them and to bring our attention back to the present moment. The physical sensations are also important to pay attention to. Firstly, paying attention to the physical feeling can help us to notice more quickly when we're having strong emotion. Again, the sooner we notice our emotions, the sooner we have a choice about what we want to do about that emotion. Of course, if it is a pleasant emotion, we might choose to stay with it for a while. The other aspect of paying attention to the physical sensations of emotions is that by shifting our attention from being in our heads, creating stories, to being in our body and noticing the physical sensations, we can get back to the present moment. Many people who have had extensive academic training or engage in professions that require a great deal of the use of our thinking minds can sometimes become oblivious to the fact that emotions do have a physical feeling that goes with them. If this is the case for you, it can be very helpful to become more fully acquainted with the physical sensations that go with emotions. This gives you more ability to notice and more choice to act. The sorts of physical feelings you may notice associated with emotions include things like a sense of tightness when you feel stressed, or a sense of lightness when you feel joyful or happy, or a sense of heaviness when you are facing a difficult responsibility. The third aspect, the emotional mood or tone of your mind, may well be the aspect you are most aware of already. A useful acronym for an approach to handling our emotions well is RAIN. R standing for recognition, A for acceptance, I for investigation, and N for non-identification. Stepping through the four parts of this acronym, R, as I said, is for recognition. This is about noticing and naming the emotion that you are experiencing. You might later like to look at Matthew Lieberman's research on the effect of naming emotions. You'll find a brief summary of this research in the resources section below. In summary, his research found that naming emotions helps to settle down the amygdala. And, as you can imagine, if the amygdala settles down, that helps to make an emotion feel less intense. The A is for acceptance. The mindfulness philosophy considers that any mental event is okay. We don't have control over what comes into our minds and there's no usefulness in judging what turns up. When we judge, we simply add a new layer of secondary emotion to our original feeling but more about that later. Acceptance of our emotions is just that, just accepting that it is. It may be pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, but there's no usefulness in labelling it as good or bad. It just is. By stepping back and noticing it, naming it and allowing it to be there, simply because it already is there, 
we can become less attached to that emotion. The I for investigation is about just observing and noticing the in-the-moment experience of the emotion. And an important part of this is to notice the physical sensations attached to the emotion. This is an aspect that we will explore a lot more in this week's mindfulness meditation. And lastly, N for non-identification. This is an interesting point. Think about how we speak about our emotions. I am happy. I am sad. I am angry. Interesting, is it not? If I speak in this way, it is as if, instead of I am Angela, I morph and now I am sad. Through my language, I am suggesting that I have become sadness. It can be very helpful, instead of using this identifying with type language, to use the observer type language when we're aiming to regulate strong emotion. For example, instead of saying to ourselves, I am sad, we can say, as if we're looking at a bug under a microscope, there is sadness. Creating this distance between ourselves and the emotion can help to de-intensify it. This may sound weird or unnatural, but try it and see if it helps. In my own experience, and from talking with many others who have tried it, this is a very potent tool. Of course, when we are having a pleasant emotion that we are enjoying, we probably don't want to de-intensify it. The mindfulness philosophy asks, is it useful? And we only need to use this strategy on feelings that are not useful to us, or at least not useful to us in the way we are currently experiencing them at that particular moment, if we are becoming overwhelmed by the emotion in an unhelpful way. It is important to point out that we are not trying to avoid difficult or unpleasant emotions. It is important to note to notice and accept unpleasant emotions. Noticing and naming emotions is a way of validating them. I think of validating our emotions as a little like validating the emotions of an upset child. Have you ever noticed a child who has had a slight fall or in some way has slightly hurt themselves and they go crying to a parent or caregiver? And if that parent or caregiver gives them attention and validates the feeling, for example, oh, that must have hurt, can I kiss it better or does it need a sticking plaster? It can come to an end quite quickly and the child happily returns to their play. Being validated in this way helps them to calm down. And being able to validate our own emotions is really important. The issue of validation is a combination of the R in our RAIN acronym, the R of recognition and naming, and the A of accepting. But coming back to non-identification, it can be helpful to think of the self as a clear blue sky. That clear blue sky could be said to be our essential self. The self that was there when we were born and remains until we die. Whatever clouds pass across the blue sky are not who we are. They are simply passing events. Similarly, thoughts, feelings, urges, sensations and other events are not who we are. They are simply crossing our mental radar screen. So it's important that we don't identify them with them and see them as part of who we are. Becoming more mindful, more aware of the moment-by-moment -moment experience of our emotions can help us in many ways. Firstly, it enables us to develop a deep compassion towards ourselves as we learn to validate our emotions. Secondly, it helps us to recognise the bodily sensations that go with our emotions. This helps us in two ways. 
It can help us to notice our emotions more quickly, more readily, when they arise. And in so recognising them, we can choose how we want to respond to them, rather than find ourselves getting lost in them. And B, when we focus on the bodily sensations of our emotions, we get out of our heads, and this can break the rumination or other unhelpful thinking patterns that might be happening in association with the emotions. And thirdly, we begin to recognise that, um, that our emotions are ever-changing. When we are in our heads thinking about our feelings, it can feel like the uncomfortable emotion we are experiencing is very intense and will stay that way permanently. But when we closely attend to the physicality of our emotions in a moment-by-moment -moment way, we notice that the intensity of the emotion rises and falls, and that it is not always there, and it will not last forever.